Aloha everyone. I hope you're doing well. Hope your classes are going well. And I just, uh, congratulations. You guys have made it through the first quarter of the semester. We've completed the first portion of our English 100 class. So we're gonna start with our research and rhetoric and, and just kind of go through all the assignments, which will give you an overview of what you can expect for the next couple months of this class. Okay, so if you made it this far, you should have turned in your personal website. And today we're gonna to start working on part two, research, rhetoric, and argument. This will be a more extensive portion of the, the course. This will be kind of intense, but at the end of it, it will really simmer down and you don't have a final for this class. So really just, you know, if you can just hunker down for the next six weeks and get this done, you're kind of smooth sailing after that. So um, the first thing you'll do is you will pick your topic. So this week, you're going to need to create a research question. You'll want to go check out this source from the library here. Uh, it has a variety of topics and how you're going to narrow that topic. So you wouldn't want to have a topic like diet or nutrition. That's way too broad. This is a 2,000 word paper. So, you know, you wouldn't even want something like vegetarianism. Uh, with how does a ver vegetarian diet maintain adequate nutrition? I would say that's still probably too broad. Um, so what is it exactly? What type of nutrition? I had somebody uh, do like children, infants them. So make sure to review that. Think about your topic. It might be your the topic you're using for your blog. It could be something else. Um, and you can see how this uh, publication review will help you to pick your topic. Uh, so you will go in here and you're going to pick three publications that you enjoy reading and you're going to read an article in each of them and just, you can just skim through the article, you know, and then you're just going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, four to six sentences. Uh, what did you, what did you, what grabbed you to read that article and did you learn anything from it? And were they able to keep you involved in the article? And then just talk a little bit about what makes a good article that you would want to read. Um, kind of have an idea of what kind of articles these magazines publish. Here's um, a few ideas for you to choose from, but uh, you can choose anything you want really. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, up to you. So um, let's go to the minor assignments. So you'll see how this really works. So that daily assignment is setting you up for your op-ed pitch. So you go in here, you read the full description again. You know, you need to follow these prompts. Uh, you're gonna read a little bit about a, what an op-ed is and you know, how to form a good op-ed. Op so go in there and read that, enjoy that, you know. You, can, you might have fun. You might be able to publish this, this op-ed that you write. Um, so that's the pitch. Uh, and so you can see how you use that daily assignment that leads us into this pitch. And then your next assignment will be the annotated bib. They're all worth five points. The annotated bib, uh, you'll go in here. This is gonna be a PDF. Why? Because you need to use academic form formatting for the PDF. That will be in your daily assignments, going over you know, academic formatting, going over what an annotated bib is. Uh, but there's, uh, you know, this is 350 to 500 words. It may take you uh, more than that 
You can always write more words, but you have to meet the minimum requirement for the word count of this class. Uh, you have to meet the 5,000 word requirement. Um, but there's really three components of this paper, which is uh, you need to find the, the, a source and then you know, summarize the content of the source, which doesn't mean you have to read the book or the, the article. You can read the abstract. Uh, just get an idea of what's in there. Uh, and then tell us why it relates to your topic and then why you consider this to be a credible so source. Um, one of your sources, so you, you need five sources. You only need three for the actual research paper, but you will have five here to choose from. One of them needs to present an opposing argument to whatever argument you're gonna, you're gonna take on. So if you're gonna say, uh, you know, you're gonna argue for one side of an argument, you need to show us the opposition and you need to actually present their side of the argument and you can refute it or you can just sort of provide analysis. So, but for this assignment, it's mainly just finding your sources, giving us a rundown. Why are you picking these sources? You know, it's a little bit of a summary, a little bit of why it's for you, a little bit of why it's credible. That's the main three things. Have an opposing source, have your citations correct. So, you know, I suggest using that sample paper uh, in your assignments, look at the sample paper, make sure it's lining up, read through some of those uh, sources. Then when you get to the final paper, uh, you may end up having to add more sources, but whatever sources you use, you'll just use these citations, you'll get rid of the annotations, that's your works cited page. So we're going to go back in here. Then from that annotated bib, you're going to take one resource and you're going to review that resource. So this is a scholarly review. So you are going to need to tell us what that source says, but also tell us why it matters to your topic. and you know, pro provide a little analysis. Do you, you know, do you think what the source is saying is true? Why? So, so it's gonna be, you know, you're doing that annotated bib, you're gonna state just point blank, why are these sources credible? And then as you start to go through these next two sources, two assignments, uh, you really need to be a little bit more analytical than just summarizing or just saying, they're credible because it came from a scholarly journal. They're credible because it, you know, was a government source. You're going to actually need to say, you know, this person is a, is a scholar, so they see it this way, which is different than a doctor that's on the front lines. These two people may have the same background, but one has experience, you know, something like that. Um, you need to uh, state your article up front. So, you know, in blank, you state the article title, the author, state the author's name up front. And then for the rest of that time, you refer to the article as the author's last name. So-and-so states, don't, don't say, in my paper, I'm using these sources and the sources say, no, be specific, you know, and that's how you show that the source is credible by Dr. So-and-so. Oh, okay. They're a doctor. Oh, they're a scholar. You know, just introduce them that way so that we know why you think they're credible and then include it in your analysis. But this is more of a review, you know, it's just, it's a further 
um, review than you did in your annotated bib, though. So that's that. Re research two and three is probably going to be one of the hardest assignments that you do. And uh, it is going to be um, probably the, the content of your paper. So these are two sources that are different than your resource one. And, and they should be the two sources that have different views about your issue. You should be able to reform, uh, form a rebuttal. So you should have done the King-Wallace assignment and it should be a little bit like that. So again, a short introduction, introducing your sources, introducing the authors, state the sources by their author's last name. Uh, and then uh, you should have a theme. So for example, uh, just like we did the King-Wallace assignment, we picked those themes, freedom, slavery, chains, God. And then underneath that theme, you're going to create a little discussion analysis between your two sources. So this is no longer going to be all about them. It's going to be about you. It's, it's what you're taking from these two sources. This is your paper. If you have experience, you know, that's what you can add into your introduction, your conclusion, your op-ed. But this is, uh, you should have that theme. You should have both, uh, both authors in a conversation about that theme. What I don't want is you to, again, summarize like you did in your annotated bib, uh, one person one source and then the other source and then say a couple things about the analysis. What I want you to do is, you know, you can refer back to my example on the King Wallace. So you should say, you know, freedom. This source says this, this source says this. I think this about the sources, this is why they disagree or don't agree on this because one has experience, the other doesn't. Um, because one is using old data and the other is using new data. Because one is coming from this really biased um, place, and, you know. So maybe they're a credible source, but they're opinions are skewed. And that's where you can pull in the beyond, beneath the buzzwords assignments. Get beneath those words. Don't say something like, because they're liberal or they're conservative or they're Republican. What, what is it that makes them those things that is informing their research? Now, if you cannot find a theme between your two sources, you may have to find another source. Uh, or you can speculate about one what one would think about the other. So if you're having trouble with that, you know, email me. We can try to find some, some better sources. And sometimes, you know, it's really about your Google search. You know, you have to think of words. You have to think of different ways that this to topic would be talked talked about so that you can find the best resources that are out there. Okay, so this one is copy paste into the textbooks because I'm really just looking mostly at your rebuttal here. Um, but the other two are uh, PDFs, uh, annotated bib and resource one because I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this back this one comes back with my comments about like some of the writing and this needs to be formatted correctly and you cannot format a paper uh, correctly in, you know, a text box, a discussion post thing. But um, after that, you should have enough to form your research paper. 
So these two things will come become the content of your paper. Maybe resource one will sort of help you define your topic. Then you have this rebuttal under this theme. You have your work cited. It, this may function as your introduction. And then all you really have to do is write your conclusion, which should be a li little different than your introduction, you know, because you've done all this research. Uh, if you have experience, it's great to include that. And then you're going to take this 2,000 word dense academic formal paper and you're going to form that 400 to 1,200 word op-ed that, you know, you're reaching the people. So if you have some like really data like science information, you're going to have to take that and put it into uh, terms that normal people understand and use some kind of hook to make them want to read it. So this paper is just as hard as, as the, the research paper. Then you'll do your peer review of the op-ed. So that's where we're headed. So the reason why I went through all this is to make you think, yes, when you're doing this annotated bid, it's a really big deal. Uh, you can always change your sources. You don't have to stick with it. But, you know, the more you put into this, uh, the easier it's going to be, the less time it's going to take because you're pulling your resources from that. And then the better sources, the better papers you write for this, the easier it is to, to, to do that final paper from those assignments. So you're creating your final paper through these assignments. You're practicing in the post. Uh, make sure you do the post. It should be really helpful. You're going to have to read through this kind of stuff. It's MLA. It's boring stuff. I ain't going to lie, man. But you got to know it. This is college. This is uh, how we cite our work. I don't expect you to know how to do it perfectly, but I expect you to have a pretty good handle on it. So the other thing is if I make comments in any of these papers, so... Uh, if I say, hey, your your bibliography is wrong, uh, you need to correct it before you turn in that final paper. If I say in resource one, this is, uh, you're not really getting the argument, then you better get the argument. If I say you're not supporting your, uh, your argument isn't clear, try to make it clear. So... The whole point is to use these assignments to, you know, make your final paper, you know, to, to, to use those comments and edits for your final paper. So make sure you do that. Okay. I think that pretty much covers, covers it. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, just shoot me an email. Okay. Bye for now. Okay. Aloha.